Gabe Cave. I'm Gabe. Splash. I'm Darren, King Kaiju. I'm Brandon, and I just farted. And don't forget drill pool in the back. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and I am going to take my hat off. Good job. And before we get started, I um, want to do a little segment from our sponsor here. Make sure you check them out. They're great people. And we're going to get started with today's topic, which is a two-part series. Well, and that is part one and part two of CGC boxes. This is kind of an unboxing video we're doing here, but we are unboxing um, CGC graded comics. We know we have a list of what's in said boxes, but we don't know what's in each box. So we kind of know what we're kind of going to go over a bit, but it's, gonna, it's like an unboxing. It's random. Uh, it's a mystery for us and you, and you're going to get to experience it with us. Gabe is so stoked that he is speechless. I suppose we should open our first one here. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it was handed to us. I just have a hard time getting into that, that tape there. I don't know what the deal was, but... All right, so this uh, the first box here is actually just one, so I'm, I'm assuming it's important. Is uh really? Well, I really don't know, but it's, it's one graded comic in here. And I probably should have showed what it was or did not actually. This is a piece. Of Okay, all right, all right, yeah. It is the, the Marvel, Marvel Fumetti, Fumetti book starring Stan Lee. Stan Lee, iconic Stan Lee cover. This is like a like a 80s TV or 70s TV show, like starring <clears throat> the cast, I guess, of Marvel? I don't really know. I mean, you cast. Can... Yeah. Of okay. a ton of artists, uh, the okay. who's who of the '80s. I didn't know Marvel back, was a show. Back at Marvel, it is not. <laughs> I mean, you got Chris Claremont. Uh, uh, there's like Roy Thomason up there. I can't really tell. Uh, Simonson, uh, John Byrne, Jim Shooter, Barry Mantlo, Hal Milgram, David Cockrum, uh, David Smith. I can't remember. Uh, Denny O'Neill. I mean, just a ton of, of, of cool artists. It's really creepy looking face here. Yeah, that creepy uh, hole. Um, it's a 9.2. It's a pretty good grade. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know why it's, you know, it says Stan Lee. I wish they could have had a box to the side that says Excelsior. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it says Stan Lee, so you, you know, collect the rest of them. Yeah, you can just imagine. Well, that's you, pretty cool. Well, Brandon, you can imagine Excelsior on the side. I will. Yeah, I will too. What's on the back? That's all, folks. Looks like some Marvel employees uh, making a human pyramid. I should add somebody on top. A bit of a disappointment there. Yeah, a bunch of douchebags. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> See the next. I actually one. really like the cover there. It's kind of out of the box. Haha, <laughs> literally. Um, oh, this was a little heavier. You know, Brandon, some people ask. When is it over? What are you feeling? It's over when it's over. It is over when it is over. So we'll just kind of go with these in order here. Sorry, the closest to me. I don't know if you can see that or not, but... It's, it's quite a large box. Okay. Okay, this is, um, oh wow, I did not know that. All right, so I was expecting the Twilight Zone to be a full comic. Yeah, be a full comic. I didn't know it was that small. Um, it's really cool, actually. Twilight Zone comic, it's a 9.8 here. White mini pages, comic. and that is, yeah, mini comic. And Gabe, you said you didn't know what the Twilight Zone was. The Twilight Zone was 
weird stories from the Twilight Zone, which are like um, oh, okay, um, basically created and written by Rod Serling uh, back in the '60s, starting the '60s. It started out black and white. Um, I believe they had some color ones towards the end. I don't remember correctly. That would have been the 80s versions. Anyways, the Twilight Zone, uh, it was kind of supernatural yeah, or fantasy type for. stuff, but they would always have, there was always a moral lesson. Yes. That was mm. what was great about that show was, you know, it was sci- it could be science fiction, it could be paranormal, but there was always moral at the end of a it. A moral story. I mean, that but was it was the always it. the Twilight Zone, you know, whether it was science fiction or whatever. There's always something weird, like the devil or something. You had to, you know what I mean. Well, Rod Sterling was a great writer, uh, so submitted for your approval. The Twilight Zone. And did they didn't they just come out with a new series, Twilight Zone? I believe it was uh, Jordan Peele. I believe so. Who was, who mm-hmm. was doing? I've not seen it yet, but I, I, I think it had good reviews. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's Rod Sterling level, but check it out. Yeah. Kind of a funny story while we're putting this up, and I'm getting the next one out. Uh, for whatever reason, my wife decided to watch this with my mom, and that's all she was talking about for like three weeks was the Twilight Zone, and then I tried to watch it with her, and she wouldn't do it. Hmm. So, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, we have another another Twilight Zone. I'll have to sit here and talk about this one. Wow. Um, another, another one. one. Another one. Uh, 9-8, <clears throat> just like the one we just... Just did here. We'll have a little bit of piece on the back here. I think they had a SpongeBob fact, episode. That nothing that was to say after. at all. I think they had a think, SpongeBob episode that was themed after that. Probably like a recent one. Well, did. speaking of SpongeBob Yellow, tell us about this one, Gabe. Uh, it's Daredevil 181: The Death of Electra. What else? What is? That's that's what I know about it. That's what you know about it. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about Daredevil as a whole. What's his name? Matt Murdock. Uh, he's blind. Murdock. Why is he blind? Because, I don't know. It was radioactive material. He pushed somebody out of the way and the truck tipped over and got, got in his eyeballs. Okay. Which gave him, like, superhuman abilities like sonar. And a really cool cane. <laughs> I don't think that was one of the abilities, but... Really How do you know? <laughs> How do you know? How do you know he didn't get up out of the goo and his hand was, like, buried in it? He was just like... Kane. If you change the line, like if it, it, you either turn into the Joker or Daredevil, like yeah, getting dipped yeah. in there. Joker was acid. Hey, you're though. not wrong. How do you know? Joker's was a bad of acid. How do you know? Did you fall in it with him? No. I didn't think so. Okay. That's a. We'll go over that one more time. It's a nine eight. Really good cover. White pages. Uh, and you can get some free Lone Ranger Western Town. I actually would like that. It's apparently made by Gabriel. Oh, I would like that. What a coincidence! Yeah. I, I can't. You need to get to busy. You. I can't yeah. give it to you. Let's go, Gabe. We're sold out. Well, uh, you need to unsell out because I want some Lone Ranger toys. Stop! Stop selling ASAP. out. I, I can't do it. Stop selling out. Let's make that happen. Stop selling out, dude. We also want to thank our sponsors, Ross and Phyllis Group. <clears throat> oh, this is pretty cool here. Say, um, Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's a didn't know it was also a mini comic. I didn't either. I was not expecting a mini one. And this is a, a 9 8 little mini comic here. It says uh, it's a number one, 1977. Actually, I was looking into Ripley's Believe It or Not, and uh, it was made by uh, Robert Ripley back in 1918. And hmm. he started with newspaper clippings, doing like comics and newspapers about crazy, believe it or not, stories. Um, in that I believe he's from L.A. or San Francisco, I can't remember, but he was in Chinatown, and they were telling him these crazy stories. And that's where it started with, and he went from that to making books about it, but the books weren't as many, as many so he started making little comics about it. And um, I see this as number one, but I actually couldn't find what number one was, so I guess we're looking at it, but I thought for whatever reason it was before 1977. <laughs> I've been to a couple of those museums. It seems like it's the same stuff in every one. So some of it, it even says replica. Of yeah, the actual, right, right. Actual deal. It's interesting. Tell me you have ten shark heads just laying around. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a pretty cool, pretty cool little book here, and it's a certainly a pretty cool little. Uh, it's a pretty cool place to go to if you you're near one. 
Oh, we have some like knights here, some Templars, I don't know, something. True ghost stories. Believe it or not. Oh. I just smack that on the table. Good job. And Drops we have it down another three grids. 9.8 Ripley's Believe It or Not. Sweet. Number one. This one actually looks in better condition. I don't know if it's just the uh the white pages. They, it's probably yeah. it's probably the scratch that you put on there when you when you know I bumped the corner. I did not yeah. bump. Yeah. Watch okay. It. Watch C D C. C D C. We'll have to reorder it. Mini comic with white pages. Uh nine eight. <clears throat> Same one we just opened. We have uh, another nine point eight. Twilight Zone. Where did we find these at? <laughs> How do we, okay, so I, we need to go back to the back and ask Drillpool where he got these. Please leave Drillpool a question in the back. Where does he find so many Twilight Zone? Does he get them from the Twilight Zone and then bring them back to us? How much cereal did you eat from the 70s? <laughs> Why did you keep the cereal from the 70s and did you just eat it recently like, to get those out? Were those in cereal boxes? Yeah. I've seen comics like that from the 70s that were like that, but they weren't Twilight Zone. You never He's know. just like 70s box of cereal, just eating it now. Just, oh, i got to get to the, the Twilight Zone. No. <laughs> Turns out it's a hallucination from bad cereal. Uh, we're looking at it now. This is not a hallucination. No, I mean the actual. I had cereal yeah. this morning. Right. Oh, oh was my it, goodness. Was it 30 coats of flakes? Uh, yes, 30 coats of black and green flake, just like the 30... Wow. Wow. Twilight Zone books we're going to open in this box. <laughs> like I said, it's a mystery to us. We do have more than this, I promise. Um, I didn't check how many duplicates we had of of one. But <laughs> <laughs> is this a joke? Uh, are we in the Twilight Zone? Is it, is it just repeating We're right just now? going to unbox forever Twilight Zone books. We can't leave this until we find the moral of this story. There's a moral here somewhere. The Twilight Zone is not stupid. Don't is trust that moral? Pool. Put these all back in here. Um, and these are all 9.8s as well, so if you're out there and you're watching and you're like, hey, I really need to find a Twilight Zone 9.8, you can't have one. Because <laughs> they are ours. All right, all right, all right. This is something different. Yay. Oh, okay, it's okay, all right, okay. Right. Goody. <laughs> it's another mini, mini, mini It comic. is <laughs> another mini comic. Is it Ripley's? No, it's, uh, I'm going to just do it sideways like it. so you can see it. Oh, this is a 9.8. Uh, Grimm's Ghost Stories number one from uh, 1977, a mini comic. <laughs> Yes. Um, these were just like random ghost stories, and I kind of looked into a few of them first. Um, so you've seen Scooby-Doo, I'm sure. So picture Scooby-Doo, the ghost stories on Scooby-Doo, but without the gang. So like just the ghost story, like the Black Knight. Or what was it? The So it's literally just the story behind the Dark Knight. Or not the Dark Knight. But, but not Scooby-Doo, obviously. Not anything to do with Scooby-Doo, but like, like those type of stories. Yeah. Like, there's a ghost in a castle. But how, and it tells you about the ghost. But they get away with it because uh, you don't worry But about it's not a scheme; it's an actual dog. ghost. Okay, that's right. That's right. I like these little ones like this. They've got pretty cool little bit of art here, and you can see I heard a crash. Must have been must have fallen from its pedestal, and it was the, the knight in armor. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. That's a 9.8. Grimm's Ghost Stories. Your face doesn't give me hope. We're in the duplicate zone. <laughs> the duplicate uh -huh. zone. It is another <laughs> Grimm's Ghost Stories. And I promise you, I'm just... not pulling these out of... I wish the other, you could see the other stack over here. There's, there's clearly two boxes. I don't know if you can see this one here. But um, this, this is not a joke. We have been given the task of... Unboxing this, and there we're are a bunch just, of duplicates. We're just unboxing the same thing multiple times. If you were to believe it or not, this is another. Or please Ripley's believe it or not. Believe it or not, comic. White pages. Um, another nine point eight. You gonna say white pages every time? Don't do that. Don't do that. Why? No. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's another. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. We're going, we're going to do a repeat. <laughs> so tell us about that one, Gabe. It's the death of a lecture. How do you know? What else? How do you know? That's all I know. How do I know? Because it's, it's the death of a lecture. He knows because he Googled it. Google. Well, can you say maybe it's a Frank Miller story? You know, the creator of like 300 and... Who's Frank Miller? The creator of 300. The movie? Sin City. 
Really? Yeah, Sin City, 300, all that. That's him. Frank Miller. I've been enlightened. I really didn't know that. I don't know who that is. Get out. I've never seen Sin City, but I have seen 300. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't you pull the back. <laughs> 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 Just take it off. Just, 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 go. just put it over there. Get it. There's no need to explain it. Just put it over there. We have to have a word with our producer. Uh, How much cereal did you eat? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We got something different here. We got something different. You sure? I hope you're ready for this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me what is so different. Explain yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Stop. Yes. This is the fun zone. <laughs> it's a 9.8, guys. Again. And, and what it's white pages. It's, it's white pages. All right. And I'm going to tag out. <laughs> Before we're done, I really am going to show you that this is not us just pulling these out just for jokes. I'm putting them all on the table. Quite well. Is it Ripley's Blue or not? No, it's not. Is it Grimm's Ghost? No. Is it Daredevil? It's an OMG horror anthology. This is one of the uh, coronavirus canceled ones. We've talked about this several times. With We actually talked about it with Rob on the live video if you watch it. Brandon, did you watch it? I was there. You witnessed it firsthand. Yeah, that's right. Number 21. Witness me. Witness. Anyways. Um, yes, yeah, number 21 out of 150 will be forever immortalized in this piece of plastic. Yeah, I like how they uh, gave us a qualified grade because it's an artist proof. 21 out of 150 because it's right on there. First Prince of Games Cave. Yes, it is. And who else? Games Cave. I said that. Who else is the first print of? Mm. Well, it's in parentheses, but it's Gabe Rawson. Oh. Mm-hmm. You have a first appearance in comics? I mean, I don't... I'm not literally in it, but... I mean, you should just, like, take that it's, comic it's, with you. It's my name. When you go back to school, just carry that around with you and show it to the ladies. No, I'm good. <laughs> you need to get me my, my Lone Ranger toys. <laughs> I don't it have right? any more. It, it was Lone Ranger City or town. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Team. Oh yeah. Believe it or not, buddy, it's another nine point eight. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah. I'm not even oh gonna take this out of plastic because it's another one. Again. Okay. I don't believe it. So. Okay. This is, little, is this actually is different. this is different. This one is different. Okay, so this Slightly is different. another OMG horror anthology, but this one is not one of the Corona ones. Which how many did they make that were not stamped? Ten. Ten. Ten, Ten that were not stamped. A ominous voice from the uh, the other side, the Twilight Zone, uh, told us that it's ten. I don't know if he's inside or outside, but. And it looks like this cover was done by Tone, our good buddy Tone. Rodriguez. This is number 13 out of 150, but this is one of the 10 that were not, uh, one of the 10 that were not stamped with the chrome. <clears throat> it's another Gr- Grimm's ghost story. <sighs> 9.8. I'm tired of these. Uh, and this one here is a, um, believe it or not, it is another Ripley's, believe it or not. Like to speak to your manager. <laughs> uh, it's a nine point eight. We're gonna care in him. Yes, we are. I'm gonna save that one for last. Um, we have another horror anthology, number twenty two out of one fifty. What was this other one? This is a duplicate box. This other one was twenty one, so we have twenty one and twenty two. This is one of the cancelled versions. Nice. Um if you would believe it or not, that's a ghost story. Then there is a, oh, let me do this first. There is a, another horror anthology 
This is number 19 of 150. This is another one of the 10 that is not stamped. Not not watermarked. Not watermarked. With, with there the, you go. Uh, canceled because of coronavirus. 9.8. I believe this whole box is 9.8. Maybe one that was not. But for the finale of the box, we have a Ripley, believe it or not, 9.8. With another Grimm's Ghost Stories 9.8. And now that we are leaving the Twilight Zone, and so you know I'm not, this is no joke here. Pull these. We're just going to do a little Twilight stacks. Zone. Twilight Zone. These are Grimm's. Both Grimm's. Ripley Twilight. I'm pretty sure there are at least two of everything here. Twilight Zone. Uh, Ripley's. Grimm's. We gotta see who won though. And Ripley's. So here we go. Twilight's got six. Seven. Seven. We got over the Brandon. Six. Ooh, Ripley's, believe it or not, one with seven. And I think they're all 9.8s. All 9.8s. Pretty solid collection of 9.8 tiny comics from the 70s, and they're all from 1977, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Must have been popular then. Uh, they're probably all produced by... Same guy. Western Publishing. This is Ripley International, and this is uh, Cayuga Productions. I think they had something to do with each other because the books all look the same. You know, yes. I know Western Publishing <laughs> had a lot to do with uh, the Whitman. Uh, the Whitman versions of comics, so it might have been a Whitman type deal, or or cereal box. They all because could have all, been in cereal boxes, go. Because if you see overhead here, you can see that they're all coloration. Well, no, they have the the box and then the the dual yeah the box with the dual tone there, and they're all the same size. Yeah, all nineteen seventy seven. But they all have different publishing. No, that Western publishing, Western publishing. Yeah, Western. Yeah, I was reading them. The, uh, well, yeah. I think that's all we have for this unboxing. We have the part two. Um, I know is different. Soon. There is a lot of different ones in that one. I think this was just the duplicate box, and hopefully we don't see another Twilight Zone. Please. Um, believe it or not. Believe it or not, we might see another Twilight Zone. Uh, that makes some ghost stories. That would be very grim. Um, yeah. Let's move these, because we have something else to do. When do we have to give something away? Winning. What? Winning. Yeah, somebody has to win something. We have to mm -hmm. give something away. Brandon has to find us a winner for Richard Soreo's art cards from last week, which are right here. Do a little sneak peek of those again. See you. My favorite, wow, well, yeah, fantastic. My favorite, again, was the, uh, just so you know this, that solid piece of Ghost Rider and Darth Maul. So hopefully you didn't choose either one of those, or if you did, hit me up. are this one, this one, and Bruce. Gabe's Cave Consolation Prize. Dead last. Still win something either way. Why yeah. do they win something? Bad, bad, bad answer. Bad answer. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to give away... Because we chose to have it like that. No, Gabe, because we want people to win. Yeah, we chose to have people win. That's why they win. No, Gabe, we want people to win. Even that the people too. who lose win. That's right. Yeah. You're all winners. Except Gabe. <laughs> now we're going to do this week's Artist Spotlight. And that is who, Gabe? Uh, Rodney Roberts. Yes, the art nerd. 
while Dave is getting these unrubber banded before you sit them out there, you can check them out on Facebook at Rodney Roberts and um, on Instagram at The Art Nerd with two R's in the nerd. So, nerd. Ooh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Fancy. Let's get this set up right here. Got Venom. Venom. Batman. I like that red lightning in the background there. Mm-hmm. Snake eyes. Snake eyes. Snake eyes. The cat. Batman. Again. Got a uh, a red first order. First order. Cobra oh, Commander. Wait, how many of these are there supposed to be? Spider Man. No. Naruto. No, we didn't. Oh, look. It's Rick. Gotta get Swifty. Gotta get Swifty in here. So, B, what's your favorite? Um, you know, this is actually pretty hard to choose from. I like a lot of them. Um, I really like Cobra and, and Snake Eyes. I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, especially growing up. I had like all the G.I. Joes and I played with them all the time. I took them. Yes, you did. I uh, would um, I would steal them from him and try and play with them because I thought they were cool. But I think Rick, he did a very good job at uh, <laughs> drawing Swifty. Rick doing Swifty the Swifty Rick. song. Yeah, Swifty Rick doing the, the song. Uh, and that's, I don't know, I like, I like the all above. I like the, uh, I like the First Order Trooper. This is, this is a tough one. How about you, Ned? <clears throat> I like the Swifty Rick. Kind of gauge, am, I, am I the one who has to say it? Say it. Do it. Uh, I like the Spider-Man. I think it's real polished. Um, looks real finished and polished. Yeah, I like Spider-Man. I think the Batman up there does too. Mm-hmm. Both Batmans do. They're actually very good. Yeah. And we know Sean likes the Naruto. He said he would personally come up here and fight anybody that tried to take it from him. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't fight him. No, I would not either. So, if you want to win one of these, uh, these cards done by Rodney Roberts, make sure you leave a comment below stating which card you want. And we will try to choose you in the next video. And uh, before I forget, because I did want to say this, these cards are done by Rodney Roberts using pen and ink and then markers and a bit of Prismacolor. Uh, is it Prismacolor? 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 Yeah, Prismacolor, colored pencils, um, some Copics, and some uh, Arteza markers. Uh, so in case anybody wants to know. Because the camera does not do these justice ever. Never does any of these justice. So, um, make sure you tune in next time. Part two will be better. There will not be this many duplicates, I hope. And if there is, we will have to have a word with the producer. <clears throat> Drill pool. Um, Winners, if you, if you win, make sure you email us and get us your mailing address. So we can get your prizes out ASAP. That is absolutely right, yes. So, yeah, just make sure you send us an email after you watch this video and see that you have won. You know, go back, point it at it, you know. And uh, I guess check us out next time. We'll see you later. Bye.